The world that we live in certainly appears to be three-dimensional, and that is a wonderful place to live. There's some beautiful things that work in 3D. Let's take a look at one of the most important, which is the cross product, a way of multiplying vectors together that only works in 3D. So let's say we have a pair of vectors, u and v, u1, u2, u3, and v1, v2, v3. Then their cross product, u cross v, is a new vector with components u2, v3 minus u3, v2, u3, v1 minus u1, v3, and u1, v2 minus u2, v1. Ooh, more on how to remember that later. Now I say it only works in 3D. You could get it to work in 2D, say by setting the third component equal to zero. Maybe that'll be useful a little bit. What's important to us right now is the properties of the cross product. Firstly, it's anti-commutative, meaning that u cross v is not the same as v cross u. It is minus v cross u. You can see that by exchanging the roles of u and v in the formula. That exchange uh, gives you a minus sign in front of there. Okay, there are some other properties as well. For example, if I take the cross product of a vector u with the zero vector, then I always get the zero vector. Again, that should be clear from the formula. And lastly, if I take the cross product of a vector with itself, I get, well, by anti-commutativity, I get minus that vector. And the only vector that is equal to its minus is zero. Okay, now again, the most important of these properties is anti-commutativity, and we're going to figure out what that, what that means in the context of the geometry behind the cross product. The cross product, like the dot product, has a lot of geometry associated with it. Let's take a few moments and think about what that is really telling you and how we can visualize it. The first thing is that the cross product is orthogonal to both of its factors. So u cross v is orthogonal to u and to v. Now, how would you prove something like that? Well, the most straightforward way to approach that would be to take the dot product of u with u cross v, uh, plug in the terms into the formula. You've got a little bit of uh, distribution of multiplication to do, and then you look at the terms and see that each term pairs up with its opposite so that there is a, a wonderful coincidence of cancellation and you get zero. You have to do the same thing for V. Now that might not be the most satisfying proof, but it will get us started at visualizing what the cross product is. Given U and V, you take the plane that they span, the cross product has to live along the line that is orthogonal to the plane at that point. Now which direction it points in is obtained using what is called the right-hand rule. The idea behind the right-hand rule is within that plane spanned by U and V, you take your right hand, right hand, not left, and you curl your fingers within that plane in the direction going from U to V, and then your thumb points up in the direction along which the cross product U cross V sits. So again, Make sure that you use your right hand, take that plane spanned by the two factors, and have your fingers curl from u to v. That shows you where u cross v is. Now, what happens if u and v are, are parallel? Well, in that case, we're going to see that the cross product is zero. Let's take a look at a simple example where we might be using the cross product to uh, help us with something geometric. Let's say I give you three points let's say uh, PQR 0, negative 1, 1, 4, negative 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. Now we all know that three points determine a plane in three-dimensional space, but I want to know what's the equation of the plane that contains these three points. One simple way to solve this equation would be to pick one of the points, let's say P, and look at the vectors PQ and PR. We can obtain those through subtraction. PQ is 4, 0, 1. PR is 2, 2, 1. Now, those two vectors definitely lie within the plane. It's really easy to describe a plane with an orthogonal vector 
And there we go, the cross product, PQ cross PR. Once we use the formula, compute that, we get a vector that is automatically orthogonal to the plane. Computing that vector to be negative two, negative two, eight, we now have the coefficients for the equation of the plane. Go back, review that standard formula that we use for a plane, simplify the expression here, and check to see that you get the right answer.